Hey guys, I'm coming to you from sunny Columbia, South America. It's 10 o'clock in the morning here, and boy, it's already cooking. It's hot. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of things that I put a little live video up yesterday, but I was rambling and rambling worse than I normally do. I want to address some things here. Uh, if you have a boxing gym or you are a coach, um, be damned careful uh, when you go to give an, uh, another amateur or a amateur kid in boxing advice. Know what the hell you're talking about. Um, I'm old enough that if you've been around 50 people and you all think you know what you're talking about, you probably don't. Uh, and young amateur boxers, I'll tell you this, look in this world today and the crap and the malarkey that you hear in the news and from this magazine and from this internet show and from this thing over here, just with it concerns to everyday life in this world and the lies and the bullshit that you are getting uh, from all directions. Keep in mind, it's in boxing as well. Boxing sucks today. It is awful. Uh, when somebody like Teddy Atlas, who is younger than me, uh, but he's old school, starts talking about that Canelo is not great, great, like you all think he is. Trust in that. No matter what Canelo says, and this is no offense to Canelo, in his day, in his era, era which is now, um, he is great. He's great. Great, great, great. You put his ass in the ring with Marvin Hagler, I don't want to hear nothing about, well, he would win because of the nutrients and the protons and the electrons and the food and the supplements. And No, he'd get his ass knocked out. That's exactly what would happen. Canelo would get roughed up and he would get knocked out. Uh, if you pulled it and went to go 15 rounds like they used to have to do. Um, uh, he'd catch him in the real championships rounds, which is 14th and 15th round. He would give a shit what he's eating, what he's taking, all this newfangled cross training and bullshit folks do today. No, no. Uh, he would quit. Roles would be reversed, and he'd probably be the quitter. I'd bet my house on it. I'd bet the house on it. Uh, so you younger guys, be careful to what you're listening to. When you got people come out telling people that have been around the sport since 1968, uh, been doing it or in it or of it in some way, shape, or form since 1968, if someone that's full of gray is giving you advice and and some punk comes on and, and starts giving you terms like to the old guy you don't know what you're looking for uh you need to run from that person that person is not qualified to give you nor any other kid any fucking advice I mean, it's as simple as that that's what's wrong with boxing today terminology like you don't know what you're looking for uh it's called soft punch the soft punch technique uh number one i've never heard that term mentioned uh uh before 2015 maybe 2018 and number two is bullshit it's bullshit 
Uh, you may throw a, a punch with less significant force trying to set something up, uh, but it is designed to pack the power in other punches. Uh, set somebody up for a combination or something like that. Uh, we've always used pawing techniques. We've used easy jabs to set up distance and shit like that. Uh, but all this 3D chest and complex, you know, when a, when a young punk, a bitch in boxing that's 40 years old or younger that uh, really... Yeah, you know, I'm getting so old, probably 50 or younger. This handing you a bunch of bullshit when uh, that's only been around since the 90s when boxing really started flailing, flailing or whatever you want to call it, floundering uh, in a big major way. That's probably who you don't need to be listening to. I mean... Uh, case in point, I've given this example before. Boxing in the United States sucks. We can't field uh, Olympic teams that are worth a crap anymore. We got probably, I believe, you can call it an overestimation. I don't with all the immigration and shit that's going on. 360 million people in the United States and uh, and we can't field an Olympic team or a country-country uh, matchup uh, against a country that's got 48 million people. So take the damn horse blinders off. Start looking around. Boxing is a learning process from start to finish. But it's not rocket science. But it is led by a bunch of self-proclaimed rocket scientists. But uh, none of these rocket scientists can even fire the engine up on the damn rocket. We suck. And I'm constantly hounding uh, our USA Boxing. We suck. And we are being led by idiots, top to bottom, led by idiots. Uh, the force and the heart has been left out of the sport. Uh, you know, I got so upset, the video probably before this one, I got Joe doing some back exercises. I'm... In the five and a half minute video, I'm talking four minutes and a minute and a half of the video is him actually doing three of the core things we do for the back. Uh, and you go look at what Boxing USA is doing. Uh, they're doing a little bit of the Superman plank. The rest of the shit they're doing is, uh, it's like, uh, don't build a muscle. You know, it's pathetic. And uh, boxers do need to be muscular. They don't need to have bodybuilder massive muscularity or weight, power lift or weight muscularity in those ways. But they need fast, twitching, uh, 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 sprinter type muscularity to them. And that's half the problem. We get a guy hit in the gut and we give up. Uh, forget getting punched in the eye and the eye swelling and, and our guys giving up. Uh, our guys get in. Uh, the guy, I believe his name was Franklin. Uh, he fought, I forget who he fought, Anthony Joshua here a while back. I believe uh, it was between... I don't know when it was, but it, it was Anthony Joshua. He was former champion at the time, I believe. And uh, he got in there and he got hit a couple of times and he got too scared to throw punches. 
So there's a lot down more to this sport than uh, James or Malik Scott or any of these sons of bitches are talking about today. And not any of them, most of them. Because we have some excellent trainers. Excellent trainers. But they're failing to, they can't train the heart and the resistance and the mind to keep going. Because they don't have it themselves and they haven't been around people that have that. Uh, last damn place in the world you would want to go to get a team, assemble a team together would be from anybody that's been involved with Floyd Mayweather. Well, he's won all these things. Well, yeah, but testing in the heart, no. Uh, there's been a fundamental psychological change going on in boxing for the worse. And young fighters don't listen to nor buy into the bullshit. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of stuff to promote yourself. Get your ass in uh, amateur competitions and beat the hell out of the other guy and win. Go into every fight with the uh, the in heart and in mind with the objective to knocking this guy the hell out that is in front of you and with the full force of the aura around you in intimidating this guy uh, from before the opening bell getting ref instructions the intimidation factor needs to be coming on through then and the intimidation switch doesn't need to be cut off till the other guy's laying on the damn canvas. And that should be the, the only real goal that you have. Uh, I know in amateur boxing it's limited. You've got people with headgear on. You wear uh, the different gloves. They're... You're, you're called off your opponent quicker and things like that. And it's for good reason. They don't, you don't want to get kids hurt. Uh, but the goal and the ultimate want and the aura of who you're developing yourself into needs to be there. The objectives remain the same as they do if you were holding the World Heavyweight Championship and a new rule came forward. If the guy made it through three rounds with you, you'd lose the championship. That's how you need to fight. Uh, train for 15 rounds uh, with the all-out objective to not let it go past three rounds. Uh, you can sit and technique yourself into quitting and being a failure. And that is a constant theme in boxing today in the United States. Uh, Anthony Joshua, he has a problem where he can't let his hands go. Uh, who does he go out and get? Uh, who's the guy's name? You'll, you'll know the guy. Uh, someone who's technical as hell. Uh, uh, a Mexican-American. And he goes and gets that guy, a guy that's not going to instill the ferociousness that he once had in him. You just everybody's blind and looking in the wrong direction. Uh, you know, I was on several news boxing news shows the past couple of weeks. I was on several of them. And without fail, I mentioned every single time let me give you young kids, some young guys, or two of the shows, there were no young guys. Uh, one of the shows, there, there were, there were a couple of young guys. But I, I say, if you want to move like Ali, if you want to fight like Marvin Hagler, you need to listen to the music and get the vibes in you to get that extra little bit that they were listening to. You ain't going to get nowhere listening to a Congo beat. Boom, 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 boom. 
That hole be come, boom, 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 boom. That hole be bad, boom, 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 boom. No, 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 no. And you're not going to listen to it from uh, that idiot Clarkson girl or whatever you people are listening to, you young people are listening to nowadays. Uh, you don't have strong music. And you, you need to be listening to strong music. You need to be listening to the silk music. And I help you move like silk. You need to be listening to the strong music. And it will help you pound like hell. Uh, everything there's a psychology to it, and nobody's looking for it. All I keep hearing is, uh, well, we got a lot more to learn, but what I want to hear is, what the hell are you planning on learning? You know, learn what? You know, there, there's not but so much pairing and slipping uh and footwork that you can do. If the guy's hitting you, you're going to quit if you ain't learning of the heart and the psychology of this sport. And I'm just as sorry as I can be. I call junk out where I see it, and I'm seeing it all over the place, out of everybody. Out of everybody. Uh, kids today, I you know, I'm hard on the kids that, that we got uh one kid was real special to me, really special. I run this kid to hell and back. And he gets a tooth knocked out. Uh, I tell him, now this is what I told him, He, you know, and maybe I messed the psych, I, really I messed the psychology up with that. Uh, he couldn't go get the tooth fixed till Monday. He was like, hey, I'll be here Saturday. I said, no, take the time off. And then he had to get the tooth fixed on a Monday. And uh, uh, I may have played my part in breaking his, his uh, no-holds-barred drive, uh, shit-kicking drive. And uh, I should have said, yeah, get your ass in here. You be, be your ass here tomorrow. And it's like always. You, you're five minutes late. You don't come back. You don't ever come back. And I messed up with that. Then I told the boy to stay out a week. Cause, and that was problems with his mom and his dad. Uh, turns out his mom, his stepmother was a dentist that did these types of things. And she said she didn't have time for it. So I got mad at her, not the boy. But I got mad at the stepmother, and uh, uh, so I, I don't know what happened. There's just a bunch of bullshit psychology. It's like Custy Amato said, champions, the, you want to be a champion, you get through when you're having all these life-altering things happen to you. You keep training. You, you keep going uh, without fail. And... Uh, uh, but anyway, that guy's broke. He come back for one day, worked. He was making woman's gestures as he was doing sit-ups. Uh, uh, just like Mike Tyson said Tyrell Biggs was doing. And then the next day, you know, he's not there. I say, send him a message, Joe. He say, are you coming? No, I'm not coming. I said, put down, don't come back. You ain't got the heart for this, and you're not welcome here no more. Uh, you need to go down to league boxing where you pity pat and get in there and just throw fists to you. Somebody gets knocked the hell out. Go down there. Go to stupid. Stupid belongs with stupid. Uh, you all think that's rough, but that's the mentality that produces winners. You look at the National Football League. You look at the uh, National Basketball Association. Hell, you even look at hockey today. Uh, rugby. Uh, the soccer football, Just a bunch of feminine uh, candy asses in the sport. You know, uh, look, I, I, I said I played with a broken wrist for a year uh, in, in football um, and not soccer football, American football. 
Um, well, and not a year. The the season, which was, I believe, 11 games back then or 12 games. So, no, that is what makes you tough, you see. It's just what makes you tough. Now, I got my nose broke. Did I stop? No, I kept going to the end of the fight. You don't stop. And guys now, they, you know, something will get hurt. Well, I'll see you next year. I've got to go down and get these treatments. Uh, the Super Bowl in 1979, the Steelers were playing the Los Angeles Rams when they were originally in Los Angeles. Uh, or the first time they were in Los Angeles. And, uh, one of their linebackers, uh, Jack Youngblood, was playing was playing with a broke down leg in the Super Bowl. So, you know, you kids are conditioned. You watch sports centers and you see a bunch of effeminates. Uh, you you see these players in the interview, which are a bunch of uh, uh, malcontent. Uh, uh, selfish, greedy effeminates. And you don't need to be watching that. Go back and watch some old stuff. Take some time to go watch what it was like in yesteryear. You didn't hear all this complaining and this bullshit. You'd seen those players that really got messed up, really got messed up. And they, they're like, or, or, or boxers, which you don't play boxing. And uh, and these guys saying as old men, old broke old men, in, in many cases, uh, saying I, I would have done it had they not paid me. If you out here just looking a dollar bill, you ain't gonna make it. You got to want to be the best. You have got to want to be the best. Uh, you look at some of these fighters that were set apart. Uh, I'll tell you something. Larry Holmes was set apart. Muhammad Ali was set apart. Uh, Joe Frazier was set apart. Joe Lewis was set apart. Rocky Marciano, who doesn't get the credit he deserves, was set apart. And countless more like him, like these guys. They wanted to be the best. That was the drive inside of them. Not to show up like uh, Charlo did against the greatest cinnamon boy and uh, survive and get a big multi-million dollar paycheck. That shit would have been laughed out. And more than likely, had it taken place in a couple of states in our great union, or which would used to be a great union, uh, Charlo wouldn't have got paid. And that's what you kids don't know. He would not have gotten paid. They would have said, this is funny, Duddy. We're not paying you. And then the powers to be would have stepped in. And if he's going to get this much money, he probably would have got this much money. See? But there's no control on the feminine side of boxing. There's a lot of control to protect people today. But going in reverse on the feminine side, there's no protection. And you got to clean this damn sport up. Young kids, be careful who the hell you choose to be listening to. There's more bullshit coming out of people that you think are good trainers, and they're not even good trainers. You may think they're great trainers, and they're piles of shit. Let me tell you something. You, you guys, I never hear any of you guys talking about Teddy Alice as but one example. You'd, if Emmanuel Stewart were living today, you'd be laughing at him as well along with these young bullshit trainers. Uh, yeah, you'd be laughing at Emmanuel Stewart as well. Uh, but you guys love to discount Teddy Atlas. Teddy Atlas was such a good technical and heart and mind trainer. He had the total package, like an Emmanuel Stewart, great, great trainers. They would will you off the stool to continue and win a fight. 
and you don't, you'll have a trainer, a coach, excuse me, sitting there lying to you during the fight today and telling you how good you're doing uh, and telling you, well, step it up over here, but not telling you you're losing because they have zero confidence in you or your ability to be able to handle the criticism and continue to go. And my philosophy is if you do not have the ability to handle the criticism and continue to go or get motivated by it, then your ass is out the door. See? Because you don't have nothing I need. Absolutely nothing I need. And you, a guy will go in, he'll be coaching in the corner, uh, half you guys out, and, he, and he's not making a dime with you. Yet he won't tell you the truth during a match. Step it the fuck up. You're losing. You got to knock this guy out this round, this last round. Uh, and you don't hear none of that. You hear, step it up. Throw more jabs. We need some more points this round. Are you okay? Is there anything you need? You know, and you got to get away from people like that. You won't make it with people like that. Uh, you, you win patty caking around in amateur boxing, but as far as you'll go, you can put some shit up on the wall behind your desk if you if if you even got the willpower to get a job with a desk or office, uh, or you can put it on the wall behind your sofa in the house, and you can sit and be proud of yourself all day long, and you feel good about you, but. Ain't no damn body else. Once you get grown, gonna give a damn one inch iota or give a shit about your boxing when you was a teenager. They're not gonna give a damn bit about it. Uh, may get some respect from some guys that are fixing to whoop your ass if you get out of line that you've told you are an amateur good boxer. But then again, you'll probably just get challenged and get your ass beat uh, in a street fight. So, uh, boxing's not like football. You don't just go through grade school playing it and, uh, and then stop because you didn't get uh, a college scholarship or couldn't make a college team and uh, your plans are done and dropped. Boxing is somewhere where you get your face bashed in and your body pummeled in major, major ways. And it, and it shouldn't be a sport to bring these kids in if they are going to compete now. I'm talking about competitive amateur boxing, not boxing which instills good and great qualities into kids. I'm talking about competition boxing. And you just get in there and listen to a fly-by-nighter because that's all any of them are. They may have, oh, well, he's got 28 heavy bags and three reflex bags in his gym and all this other equipment. And this little guy over here, he only has three heavy bags and this and some speed bags. Uh, therefore, this guy must know what he's doing more than this guy. Uh, boxing don't work like that shit. It don't work like that. Uh, you know, I've seen it work in football where they take and put money in a high school program over there on this side of the county and on the other side, there ain't nothing. But boxing don't work that way. It's an individual sport. Uh, you don't have, you're not standing there with 10 other players on your side of the ball. You're in the ring and you are alone with another guy on the other side wanting to knock your ass out. And that's why we get knocked out uh, and can't field a damn amateur boxing team. You know, and uh, sick of it. It's pure sick of it. We got some good guys coming up. I bank on these guys. But my constant worry with the guys that I'm fans of right now today, the whole damn lot of them is, is they, are they going to have somebody when push comes to shove are going to go effeminate on them and break them? Are they going to do good in the amateur? Some promoter come up, snatch them away. I've seen more better kids being knockout artists, sluggers, uh, get taken up by a golden boy or somebody else and turned into a candy ass. Uh, what do we, we, it's chest. 
No, flip the damn chess board over on the chess player and knock his ass out. It's as simple as that. It's too damn much scientific mumbo jumbo. This is worse as this last damn virus thing we had going around that they give us stuff that didn't work for. You know, and as a young boxer, you have to say this virus is going around. Am I going to take the stuff that don't work for it or am, am I going to take the old medicine that it turns out did work for it? Now let me take the fancy packaging Pfizer stuff here. Wake up, young boxers. Get tough. Uh, rest of you trainers out there think you know what you're talking about. Keep your mouth shut when you're dealing with somebody that's been in this sport older than you are. You can think about it all you like, but keep your damn mouth shut. And that's about all I got to say about that. Boxing in the United States sucks today.